Hey everyone, sorry for the delay in a video in a while. Uh, I've got something really exciting which I'm working on, so my attention has been uh, a bit pulled towards that. Um, but in the meantime, uh, it's been crazy to see how the Wi-Fi uh, video became the most viewed video on my channel. So I thought let me spend a bit more time talking about it with how the recent uh, V2 works. Um, so yeah, the overview for the video, just a quick recap on how V1 worked, how V2 works with the Vault strategies and controllers, and some sp specific V2 strategies or um, things implemented which are kind of cool, and I guess I'll probably just like uh, ramble a little about Wi-Fi uh, so you guys can get some opinions about what I think about it and use that information to whatever advantage you seek to obtain. <laughs> Now, uh, let's jump in. So how V1 worked. So V1 was fairly simple in the fact that, uh, let's say you have your USDC and you then deposit it to essentially, uh, this is just like the singular wire and contract, right? And it will just, oh, whoops, that's a eraser. Uh, it literally just spits out to you Y USDC and the, whole thing around uh, these Y strategies is essentially they're predetermined inside a smart contract. So uh, you can't sorry, uh, can't change them. Uh, they're fairly static. Uh, and yeah, like it was a good kind of V1, right? But uh, given the kind of way that um, I guess DeFi is evolving, uh, the number of opportunities keep changing every single day. Uh, and having a set and stone strategy for the rest of time isn't really that optimal. So what um, Andre came up with in V2 was kind of uh, decoupling a lot of these things. And the way that it kind of works now is you've got a few components, right? So you've got vaults, strategies and controllers so you can kind of think of these three as they're all interlinked with each other and the shitty arrows but whatever um so vaults right let's dig into these so vaults are where money is stored right so this is like you get your whatever asset you have and you put it inside a vault and you have different vaults for different assets, right? So this could be your USDC vault, this could be your SNX vault. Um, and the idea is that when you deposit something inside a vault, so let's, you've got uh, chat over here, and he'll deposit his SNX, he will then get back Y SNX. Oh yeah, and like quick update, vaults don't just support stable coins, they can be for any token now, right? So uh, this isn't just like a stable coin optimizer. This is like a any asset optimizer, which is pretty cool um, if you ask me. Uh, so anyway, vaults are where money gets stored. And if you deposit any asset, you get a Y asset back. So SNX gives you Y SNX, uh, USDC would give you Y USD, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the other kind of thing here is you have these strategies, right? And this is kind of like, okay, um, deposit inside bank or return 24% APR, or like uh, this is a compound pool which gives you 12%, or this is uh, say like an M stable, which is give you like 8%. So you've got all these predefined strategies which are essentially um, smart contracts, right? Um, and anyone can develop a strategy uh, and kind of propose it to the wire and ecosystem, right? It's uh, literally just a smart contract which anyone can read. Um, and if the system allows it as a strategy, it now becomes a valid strategy. And then on the other hand, you have controllers, right? So I'm going to draw these as people. They're actually smart contracts, though, but thinking them as people or robots kind of helps, right? So let's just call this robots slash contracts right so what the controllers will do is 
Like you'd almost kind of think of these controllers as hedge fund managers, as smart contracts. And what they're doing is they will essentially get the money from these vaults and then allocate them towards a strategy to then give yield, <laughs> all right? Um, and then this yield is then distributed to essentially two places. One is the treasury, which has a 500K cap. And then the second is users of YFI. So uh, I saw on Twitter recently that this yield being generated is actually pretty decent. Like I think uh, it's in the tens of thousands per day and annualize the revenue from uh, the wire and ecosystem uh, annualize is a couple of million. So um, it's kind of wild to think that like a one month old project has been able to do all of this. But I guess that's, I guess, a testament to uh, fair launches and what they ultimately represent, where people kind of um, are in control. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, that's like a quick overview of like how V2 works. Now, in terms of specific V2 strategy, so I think this is what um, I've been kind of following on Twitter and has been uh, pretty neat to see. So one of the strategies which has been put out is one for the synthetics ecosystem. So the way synthetics gives you rewards is that you get your SNX, you deposit inside uh, synthetics, and then uh, you stake, which means you're actually opening a position and then you get rewards, but the rewards are locked up for a year um, and you kind of have to keep playing uh, in the synthetics ecosystem. Now, the really cool thing about, uh, sorry, sorry, before I go there, one problem with this is that you have to keep claiming your rewards every week. And if you don't, your rewards get forfeited. So what this new Y earn uh, SNX strategy does is that you can essentially just deposit your SNX to Y earn, and then it takes care of this whole process for you. And you can just claim, uh, and you actually save gas fees because everyone's rewards are claimed at the same time so it's like a massive plus on gas fees especially if you're only like dealing with say like uh one to like 5k maybe even 10k given like the price of gas fees these days and then like another really cool uh strategy which i've seen is that you have uh these i think it's like uh I don't know, but essentially there have been like a bunch of Wi-Fi forks, like Wi-Fi 2, and then there's like Wi-Fi 3 and whatnot, and they're basically just scams. Um, so what Andre did is he essentially created some strategies which actually uh, farm these forks and then sell them on the open market. <laughs> Um, and it's been kind of funny because if you look at the pr uh, charts for any uh, token which has these strategies turned on to kind of just farm it and then sell it straight away, the chart literally starts going down. So Wi-Fi is kind of like a destroyer of coins uh, when a strategy gets turned on, which is uh, kind of cool. We're seeing like inter-protocol warfare coming out now. and. Because Wi-Fi is like starting to accumulate a lot of governance tokens, you can then have a world in which Wi-Fi starts influencing Curve DAO or uh, any of these other DAOs where governance is complete power. So, anyway, um, that's uh, I guess like how V2 works. And then I think like I've um, in regards to just like some more generalized thoughts, a few people like I guess asking like should I deposit funds inside wiring? And then contrary to that is, uh, should I buy YFI, the token itself, given it's run up in price? Now, 
I guess it's not really a straightforward answer, but, and you really have to think for yourself is, what is it that you're after here? So when you say like, should I deposit funds inside uh, Wi-Fi? The thing is that Wi-Fi is like a move fast, break things, and Andre's motto is I test things in prod. So if you're using anything in the wire and ecosystem, you should probably only use products which have uh, been around for a while because none of the contracts actually are audited or they're audited for free by the community members. So uh, the security is basically as good as the amount you're willing to lose. <laughs> um, when it comes to should I buy Wi-Fi, uh, I honestly don't know. So in my original uh, Wi-Fi video, which I put out, or like when I wrote the article about like, hey, Wi-Fi might be an interesting buy. It was a bit, at about two to three thousand dollars, and it's now like twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. So, uh, it's kind of hard to say like, is it going to go up from here? Because quite frankly, I didn't expect it to go this far in the first place. Um, so, if you're buying Wi-Fi now, it's basically <laughs> as good as a gamble. Uh, or you truly are in it for the long, long term and uh, you view Wi-Fi as another Bitcoin, which is a valid thesis, but uh, be careful. <laughs> um, and I guess like just maybe a bit of caution, right, is like even with yams, these things are like intentionally complex. And if you're not someone who like realistically spends eight hours a day on Twitter um, or has been for the past few months, you probably don't understand the risks you're taking right now, and there's a high chance you could get hurt. Uh, well, that's kind of what we saw with the yams, right? And you'll like have all these influencers on Twitter who's like, oh, hey, this is a joke. Oh, hey, this is like an experiment, right? And they understand the risks, and they understand what's going on. And even though like you'll see like these price charts going up, uh, there's something going on right and uh, there's always a catch and you really have to figure out like what is the catch or if there isn't a catch like what are the risks um, and I'm like more than happy to educate all of you about what certain risks are like when dealing with this stuff uh, but um, unless you've done your research please stay away from this like a lot of experimental technology coming out uh, I, I can probably make another video about like how to determine if something's good to put the, your money in and kind of breaking this down a bit more. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments uh, about what's something more that you want to see of and uh, I'll make another video on that. But until then, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video and like usual, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to the newsletter and all of those good shenanigans. <laughs> all right, peace out.